What up, man? What's good? Welcome to another episode of the Ultimate 216 Show. I am your host, Earl of Pearl. Uh, glad to join y'all on this Wednesday. We typically do this thing on a Thursday at 5 o'clock, but I have a very, very special guest in the house, and the only time she was available was today. So we're going to do this today. As always, before we get started, man, make sure you drop the hashtag in the chat. U216, make sure you drop it. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, since I've been doing that, I, we didn't had a wide range of people watching everywhere from Toronto to what bottom of the map, Fort La Lauderdale, Florida. So appreciate everybody that always tunes in. Make sure you hit that like button, ring the bell to stay in the know for all the latest that's going on with this show, the rest of the spinoff shows, and of course our flagship show, the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, uh, Pack Show. Not too much time to get into it. Don't forget, Mary Kay Cabot will be joining me in about eight minutes. We're going to talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers. Also, drop in the chat as well. Are you team hope or are you team confident? Are you team hope that the Cavaliers beat the Orlando Magic in round one? Or are you team confident that the Cleveland Cavaliers will beat the Orlando Magic in uh, round one? So it'll be interesting to see what y'all think about that. So why are we talking about hope? Deshaun Watson uh, was available to the media yesterday ahead of voluntary workouts for the Cleveland Browns. Shout out to your quarterback for showing up even when it's voluntary. I think that's important, especially when you have a brand new offensive coordinator, a brand new system going into place. Kevin Stefanski you talked about this being an attacking offense. And so it was good for him to be there. He spoke to the media and I asked Mary Kay Cabot about this. He seemed confident. He seemed like that, you know, he was confident in himself. He was confident uh, in his teammates. He seemed like that he was just comfortable in the situation and in the setting. We've seen him gradually become more comfortable speaking to the media uh, since he's been a member of the Cleveland Browns. And he was asked the question. Uh, it was from Daryl Ryder of 92.3 The Fan. Daryl asked him, what do you hope is better for you this upcoming year? And in a short version, Deshaun Wasa answered the question. He said, I don't hope for anything. My expectations is super high. He went on to say, just like everybody else in the organization and the fan base, especially for him, seeing that he's the starting quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. <clears throat> and to most people, you can sit up here and say, well, yeah, Deshaun Wasa said all the right things. That's what he's supposed to say. But the moment that I heard it, I jumped on Twitter and I said, it reminded me of a reel I've seen of the late Dick Gregory a while back. Now, Dick Gregory was a comedian and he was a social activist as well. And there's a, you can YouTube it if you want, Dick Gregory on hope. And there's a quote from Dick Gregory that says, if you hope, hope don't work. Hope I win the war, but a fool. Shout out to the late Dick Gregory. And so why am I talking about that? Y'all know this is a sports life culture podcast, and I try to do my best to kind of mesh both together. I think he's a, he's absolutely right. When you sitting here and you hoping something that will happen, he said you're telling 73 million uh, sales inside your body that you're not capable of doing it. Most of the times when people say they hope, they're not confident in the outcome of that situation. Whether it be a situation, they're not confident internally within themselves, whatever the case may be, right? You ever ask somebody a question, they say, man, I hope I get that done. Man, I hope this turn out right. Hope don't really have much conviction behind it. I tell you all all the time, man, it's about being great. You got to have conviction behind being great. You got to have high expectations for yourself that you're going to be great and understand like that's a double-edged sword, right? Because with expectations come disappointment. And that's when mental toughness comes into play. And so to hear Deshaun Watson speak like that, I think to me that says even more about his growth as a person. Never mind everything that, that goes on on a football field. That just confirms more and more like the maturity and the growth as a man. You don't hope for anything. You don't hope that you can pay your bills. You don't hope that you can feed your family. You don't hope for anything like that. 
you put yourself in a position to where you can execute the play at any given time, especially as a man. That's what you're supposed to do. And so that's how that translates, like, you know, from life to sports. Whatever it is, like, in your everyday life, man, you got to have conviction that you can get it done. Even when it's hard, even when you, like, it don't look like the outcome is going to be favorable to you, you know, you can't hope that it turned out right. All you got to do is just keep preparing, keep putting yourself in the proper situations so that when the time is right, like, everything will align itself and then you can just execute. So every single day, every single moment, man, like execute how high, have high expectations of yourself and then go out there and execute the play. Don't sit up here wishing on hope that you would get something done, because I'm going to tell you, like from a from a football standpoint, standpoint and as a fan. If Deshaun Watson said, you know, I hope I'm ready to go on week one, I hope that I have a better season that I had. Last year, I hope that I can play, you know, the full season. I don't think that would have settled a lot of Browns fans' nerves at all, for the ones who are unsettled. I don't think that that would have put them in a situation to where they was confident in him or this team, or him being the quarterback that leads this team, should I say. The man came out there and he spoke with conviction. Like, he, he really stood on that. And that's just something that I think all of us should take in our everyday life because if you hope hope don't work again i hope i win the war but a fool you can't hope anything I mean, you got to put yourself in constant situations to where like your preparation preparation and when it meets opportunity that you can execute the play and you can just keep moving forward at the end of the day that's truly what it's all about so like if you a person that kind of like live on hope all the time or you use the word hope hopefully this conversation <laughs> it changes your perspective you know on, on when you use the word and how you use the word don't hope that you can get something done get it done don't hope that things that turn out your way put yourself in a position to where no you become a winner like hope is like kind of playing a lottery you know, it's a roll of the dice every single time, and ain't no guarantee it's going to turn out in, in, in your favorable way. So for me, no hope, straight execution. Remember, man, I tell y'all all the time, and I challenge y'all every single day to be great because I think everybody on this earth got the ability to be great, and we all have something internally inside of us that is uh, unique, and it's a gift. And once you tap in and figure out what your gift is, Stop hoping. Just execute. And if you can't figure that out, just just take this. Right. A gift or a God given ability is something that you do the best with the least amount of effort. So whatever it is in your life that you feel like you really, really good at and you don't struggle to get it done or struggle as much as other people, that's a God given ability. So a gift or a God given ability is something that you do that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. Something to think about. Don't forget, man, smash the like button. Drop the hashtag U216. And let me know where y'all pull, pulling up from, watching from. I got Mary Kay Cabot joining me shortly. But before to get we get to that, we definitely got to take a break. When we come back, we'll have Mary Kay Cabot. We'll have her for about 10 minutes. We're going to ask her about Deshaun Watson. We're going to ask her about the offseason program. And we're going to see, like, if Mary Kay Cabot was to design the Cleveland Browns' third helmet, exactly, like, what that would look like. So, something to think about. Don't forget, man, more on the Ultimate 216 show coming at you next. But first, the sports calendar is loaded right now, y'all. And FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the tournament, MLB, NBA, NHL, and much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and make your first big win today. Shout out to Fan, FanDuel, man. And shout out to everybody else. Uh, getting them parlays in and winning a few bucks. We're still waiting on Mary Kay Cabot to show up. Go through some of these comments real quick. What we got here? What we got here? 
my man E Unit says, Sup, Earl. I've seen a couple of dumb comments from one of the UCS re uploads on YouTube. Don't listen to these idiots. You're doing well. Enjoy listening to your takes. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Listen, you got to take the bad with the good, right? That's what anything in life. Not everybody is going to like you. Not everybody is going to appreciate your takes. You know, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I misspeak on words. I'm very authentic. And I think that's what that's what makes me, you know, have the success that I have. So authenticity is the best thing that you could ever sell. And you got to understand, like, you're not for everybody. And the moment that you really get comfortable being uncomfortable and understand that everybody not going to like mess with you like that, you'll be cool and you'll continue to thrive. So shout out to you, man. I appreciate that love. What else we got here? We got Karen Phillips. Hey, Earl, speak about the absolute truth. Browns forever, cast forever, and Guardians forever. Shout out to you, Karen. I appreciate all the love and the support. My name is Hope, so I'm taking this rant personal, laughing my ass off, just playing. My bad, Hope. <laughs> if it make you feel any better, man, they say all you're supposed to have in this world anyway is faith and hope. Just make sure you utilize the hope in the right way. My man Mel said, you 216 hashtag East 185th. That's that 10th word, man. Shout out to you for repping. Mr. King, 562. I'm in Los Angeles. My lighter can't spark the Newport. <laughs> I remember once my mother sent me to the store to get some Newports, right? And I guess, like, they got the Kings and the 100s. And this is when uh, I had just turned 18 years old. And back then, like, I think the legal age now to buy tobacco is 21. So back then, it used to be 18. And I remember my mother sent me to the store. And I came back with a pack of Newport Kings instead of a, a pack of Newport one, a 100s. Like, my mother were really, really high yellow, right? Man, I seen that woman turn red. I never thought it was that serious over some cigarettes, but I know them, them cigarette smokers, man, they take that stuff seriously. McLothan says uh, DW is going to shred this league. Shout out to you. Yeah, I think DW is going to shred this league as well, man. I think we are all behind Deshaun Watson. Can't wait to see him. Uh, get ready to do his thing. And speaking of people getting ready to do their thing, and my favorite, she is in the queue. So I'm going to bring her in properly. She is Mary Kay Cabot of Cleveland.com. She is the Browns beat reporter, uh, Cleveland playing dealer. She is one of the nicest, sweetest people I've ever met. Mary Kay, first and foremost, man, thank you. I got to give you your flowers while we're here. When I first hosted on the radio, you was my first ever guest. I'll be in this game four years in July. When I first ever met you in the second uh, pilot shooting of G-Boost Barbershop, that's the first time like I had like a fan moment <laughs> <laughs> in this game. Oh. As a kid, I couldn't wait to read your material. I used to get the plane dealer. I used to take the sports page out, throw the rest of the paper in the trash every single morning. And so since I've been in this game, my, my podcast is Sports Life Culture. And this sports media culture, you're well respected. I thank you for so much for always showing up when you have time and just really being there for me whenever I got questions. So you're truly, truly appreciated. Oh, thank you so much. I wasn't expecting that. That That's awesome. I, I think you're doing a great job. I'm proud of you. I'm happy to help anytime that I can. And I, I love being here with you. I appreciate that. So our quarterback, QB1, Deshaun Watson, you was in the building yesterday when he spoke to the media. To me, he looked more comfortable than I've seen him before. Seemed like he was fluid in answering the questions. It seemed like he opened up and gave more detail about the shoulder injury when it might have occurred. He talked about being very confident in his rehab and this upcoming season. What was your takeaway from Deshaun Watson? Because you've covered him since he's been here. And how have you seen the growth from year one to what this would be, what, year three with the Cleveland Browns? Well, first of all, we just haven't had that many opportunities uh, to talk to Deshaun, to get to know Deshaun, and to spend time with him at all because he only played six games the first season and six games the second season. So it's still a learning curve for everybody involved in this whole process. But my takeaway yesterday, my biggest takeaway, was the fact that he readily admitted, and I pressed him on this over and over. I don't know if you actually heard the press conference I and did. got a chance to hear who was asking the questions or whatever, but I kind of tried to get to the bottom of it when he said, yes, my surgeon mentioned uh, that he was amazed I was able to actually also play in the Cardinals game too. And I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. 
Cardinals game. Uh, so that led me down the road of asking him, do you think that you could have fractured the shoulder all the way back to week three when you took that big hit against the Titans? And he said, possibly. And if there was some kind of barely perceptible or not detectable hairline fracture or some kind of damage in there, uh, it seems to inform or explain everything that happens afterwards. We don't know for sure if that's how it went down, but the fact that it's possible, I think is significant. Yeah, definitely do. And I think that says a lot about him, his toughness and his will to win. You know, I watch his uh, QB Unplugged podcast quite often. And the episode with him and David Njoku, David kind of spoke to, you know, 98% of the time, we don't know what's going on with these players. And so when they, you know, log on to social media, like the rest of the us humans do, and they see some of the things that's, that's said about them, you know, I think you can get a better understanding of how that can touch them or trigger them emotionally. And, you know, for the people who, who question, you know, his toughness or if he really wanted to play, I think when you pressed him on that question in the way that you pressed him about it, I, to me, it gave me more insight. Like, okay, this dude is really, really committed to winning football games. Yeah, that's part of it. He definitely is committed to it. Uh, but I think it also helps explain why he was never himself after week three. I think it helps explain, okay, why did you think that you were going to be able to go out in that Baltimore game? And you told, he ab absolutely told me on Friday, I am playing in this game. And, uh, and then he goes out on Sunday and he's not able to throw the football and he had to just shut himself down. And he's not someone that would do that unless he absolutely had to. And then they take him out for the next week, try to throw him back in there in Indianapolis against the Colts. And he still doesn't have it. And so I think what happened perhaps, and again, I don't know if any of this is accurate or true yet. We haven't talked to doctors about it, but perhaps the shoulder healed enough over the next couple of weeks that he was able to go out and play against the Cardinals and get through that game and then get through the Baltimore game. But then it just, it just blew out on him. It, it, it couldn't take anymore. And the glenoid displaced and the labrum was kind of like he said, hanging off the bone. So it does seem to me that these two injury injuries were somehow related. We don't know the full story yet, but it makes more sense to me if that's the case. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I, and, you know, going back over that timeline is just thinking, you know, game in and game out. Just just some of the, the pass attempts that he was electing to make versus some of the things that was open further downfield. I think just tying it all back together makes a lot of sense. Uh, Kevin Stefanski spoke to the media and he talked about him and, you know, Ken Dorsey getting together and making the decision that this offense needs to be more of an attacking offense. And I think, Mary Kay, we heard, you know, some of the same sentiments last year, uh, how the Browns offense will be more downfield and more of an attacking offense. I know it's early and we don't have much information, but what type of attacking offense that will we see this year that will be a huge difference from last year? Well, they've always been an aggressive offense. They've always taken their shots downfield. That has been a hallmark of the Kevin Stefanski offense since the day that he showed up. They're going to take those big shots. They'll continue to do that. And that, now they've got the horses and the personnel to be able to do that. Uh, you're going to be able to do that with a Jerry Judy as well as Amari Cooper and David Njoku, who you've done it with before. You'll be able to try some different things now with Elijah Moore. I think you'll see three more three receiver sets. Uh, Deshaun alluded to more of a spread type of an offense. So I think you can expect to see some of those college concepts and some of the things that he excelled in at Clemson up here on this level. Uh, you can do anything with him if he's healthy and he's got all of the talent around him uh, to be able to run any scheme or attempt any pass. Uh, I, 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 I'm I looking forward to seeing it. I'm, I'm looking forward just to seeing guys like Elijah Moore kind of get his potential, you know, untapped and taken to the next level in this offense. Um, Mary Kay, the new NFL rules when it comes to special teams. Uh, I told Typhus Powell that I believe that the special teams unit is going to make a comeback. I think it's going to be a unit that's going to have a major impact on the outcome of games this year. And it seems like that Andrew Berry like, was specific and making sure that Bubba Ventron got a lot of weapons for that unit. Do you foresee like the special teams unit having a, a bigger impact on games, not just for the Cleveland Browns, but across the NFL? Oh, absolutely. I think right now, 
special teams coordinators like Bubba Ventrone are up on that whiteboard and on that film trying to figure out who can come in here and return those kicks and make those the exciting plays that they can be. And nobody knows exactly how it's going to play out yet, but the way that I've seen it drawn up and demonstrations that I've seen, it looks like it could be a really fun and exciting play, not an afterthought, uh, something that teams will really get into and have a lot of fun with. And then, of course, you need some really good returners like a Naheem Hines uh, to go out there and to be able to return those kicks in the new environment. So I think it'll be a lot of new strategy, new vibes, new energy. So, you know, when it comes to the NFL draft, I got to be totally honest with you. I'm really not, you know, kind of vetted in, you know, all the different draft prospects like I was in years past, even before I was a professional, when I was just a fan watching the draft. You know, and I talked to a lot of my colleagues and I'm the one from Cleveland and they will ask, well, why isn't there much excitement around the Cleveland Browns in the draft? And of course, the obvious answer is we don't have a number number one pick or first round pick. But tell me what you think it is. I think the other part of it is the Cleveland Browns are just a good football team. We have a, a, a competent roster. We have a quality roster, one of the best in the NFL. There has been years past, and you know this just like I do, to where when you drafted a person in the first round, a lot of the fan base was looking at that player to be not only the savior, but to turn around the team, the culture, and everything else. Do you see that as one of the reasons why there's not much excitement for the NFL draft around Cleveland right now? I would say so. I would definitely say so. I think the the first and foremost thing is the fact that there is not a first round pick. But even if there were a number 27 pick or 28 pick or something like that, I still don't know if it would pack the same wallop that it did in the past when most of the time the Browns were looking at potentially a quarterback to come in and save this team or to come in and fix the mistake that they made the year before. So I do think that there's something to be said for the fact that it's a pretty stocked roster. There is not one person that you can look at and say, geez, they just don't have that guy and they have to go out and get him. They have what they need at every single position. So the draft will be supplemental. They will be drafting young guys that can come in and learn their positions and challenge for spots, mostly down the road, maybe some a little bit this season, but I think you're really looking towards the future with most of these picks. Speaking of looking towards the future, 2025, the NFL will allow a third alternate helmet. Now, I'm no fashion guru. Uh, I asked Cameron Justice of News Channel 5 this question, and she told me she would go white on white, white helmet, white face mask. Me, I'm going brown with like an orange scripted brown script on the side. I was born in 87, so kind of like shout out to the late 80s. If Mary Kay Cabot was asked to decide uh, to design the last or the third alternate Browns helmet, what would it look like? Wow, that's a great question. Uh, I've never really put too, too much thought into the whole uniform helmet face mask thing. But since you're asking, I like to go big or go home. So if we're gonna do, if we're gonna do a third helmet next year, why not have a little bit of fun? What about gold? Gold. I think gold would look lovely with the orange or the brown or white and orange or brown and orange. So I I would go gold with um, maybe a gold face mask, maybe still the white face mask, but let's go gold and bring some shine to this team. I think that'd be fire. All right, I'm going to get you out of here with this question because you, you have children around my age, so I know you hip to what's going on. And to the people that's watching right now, I'm going to let you all in on a little secret. Mary Kay Cabot is a huge fan of Nicki Minaj. So, Mary Kay, you know about the rap beef that's going on with Kendrick, J. Cole, and Drake and everything. If Nicki Minaj was in a rap beef with, like, Glorilla, who would win? Oh, my gosh. That's a great question. You got to go with Nicki there. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Young money. <laughs> Definitely. Oh Absolutely. Mary Kay, listen, I know you're busy. I know you got a lot to get to. Again, thank you so much for uh, always being there for me. Thank you for you know, being a positive influence in Cleveland sports media. Keep doing your thing. And just, just thank you for your time today. Thanks for having me. All right, man. Take care. That's Mary Kay Cabot, everybody. Shout out to Mary Kay, man. Give me a one if you enjoyed that interview. That was dope. That was dope. So listen, man, we got to take another break. And when we come back from this next break, uh, we're going to get into the Cavaliers with a little bit of time that we got left. And I got some questions for y'all. Before we take this break, drop it in the chat. Are you team hope 
that the Cavaliers will get out the first round or you team confident that the Cavaliers will get out the first round? It'd be interested to know uh, what you think about that. Speaking of things that you're interested to know, I'm a competitive person. I'm a Scorpio. I'm just a competitive person. My emotions is always all over the place. I usually channel, channel that into some type of like competitive vibe. Okay, so yeah, I guess it's safe to say I have a competitive side. We all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist of Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in a crazy location, building up amazing cities that brings you big money. But the best part is, is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. Um, I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. That's the big, that's the best part of it. And the leaderboards show me who's the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world and time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get the game and enjoy your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. Shout out to Monopoly Go. So I know a lot of people had a issue with um, how the Cleveland Cavaliers closed out the regular season. A lot of people felt like that for lack of a better term, they took the sucker approach that they didn't play hard to close out a game against the Charlotte Hornets team that they damn well could have beat. And it's almost like they was ducking smoke from like the Philadelphia 76ers. And let's just say that's the truth. I said on the, the panel Monday, just because you know how to fight don't mean you go picking a fight with everybody. Sometimes you got to be smart in how you move. And at the end of the day, the end goal is to win an NBA championship. Full disclosure, the Cleveland Cavaliers don't have the current roster constructed to win an NBA championship this year. So I think the approach that the Cavs took, in my opinion, is to position themselves to get the most out of this postseason that they possibly can. And before we go down that road, I think a lot of people who was frustrated, you all got to understand something. There's a lot of parallels to real life when it comes to sports, right? Your journey. Everybody that's watching right now, everybody that's going to watch this after the fact, all of our journey in life is different. The roads that we take to get to our destination is, is different. And sometimes there's a lot of different bumps in the road. More often than not, the vision of how our life plays out, it usually don't go, up, go like that in real time, right? Whether it be a, a romantic relationship, um, relationships within your family, a job, a career, whatever the case may be. You ever been in a relationship with a man or a woman and the ultimate goal is to marry that person, but you break up three, four or five times and it take a lot before it get right, before it actually gets right. And you all lived out that happily ever ever after like you didn't plan on the road being like that it just was like that but it's always beautiful when you can actually reach that destination let's take it into another context right let's say you live on the east side of cleveland and you decide to go to the Cavs playoff game that's coming up saturday right i decided to take the freeway you decide to take euclid avenue i said i'm gonna jump on the freeway you said no i'm cool i'm gonna take the streets and we both arrive at rocket mortgage field house safe we took a different road, but at the end of the day, the common goal was to just to, to reach a destination. There's a lot of teams in the NBA playoffs right now, and each team road to the playoffs was very different. Everybody got the common goal of reaching the destination of being an NBA champion. Only one team is going to reach that overall goal. What I see is the Cleveland Cavaliers team that was smart with their money. They realized that a team like Philadelphia might not pose the best match, matchup for them. You know, People can say they purposely sought out the Orlando Magic. So be it. I'll tell you this, if that's the case, you better play your hand right. If this is the team that you purposely wanted to match up with, then you need to go out there and you need to be able to execute the play. I think that Donovan Mitchell is and will be the best player in this series, the best player on the court. It'd be interesting to step up to see who's number two. If it was on me, I'm putting my money on Jared Allen. So I want to know if you all are team Hope or team confident that the Cleveland Cavaliers can make it out the first round of the playoffs. Because truth be told, no, we didn't sign up for a second round exit. But if you be real with yourself, you know this team can't win an NBA championship. So let's just like 
be appreciative fans and get the most out this season and then put the pressure on their ass to make sure they make some changes this offseason. We got about four minutes, man. I want to go through these comments. Um, shout out to y'all. My man Cody says, excellent interview. I appreciate that. What else we got here? What else we got here? What else we got here? Tempe one d says when they log on to social media, like the rest of us humans, Earl, do insects use social media? We are all humans. Wow, who knew? Just poking fun. No disrespect. Hey, look, man, no disrespect taken. That was funny. Y'all are hilarious. <laughs> uh, my man Michael says, good show, Earl. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. What else we got here? What else we got? What else? What else we got? Freddie says, I love Mary Kay Cabot. Yeah, I do too. Big facts. My man Rob says, hope he ain't confident. SD says, she hopes she's not confident. Gorilla taking Nikki's head. Hey, hey, what Nikki we talking about though? Like, we talking about Nikki like 10 years ago. I think Nikki 10 years ago, a smash glow gorilla. Like, absolute man. When Nikki jumped in that beat without bass remix, whoo. Mike's still hot right now. It's like still hot. But Glow, like, I listen to Yeah Glow every day. Fun fact. Like, and I ain't the only man that be listening to Yeah Glow, too, by the way. I think the fellas out here bumping that song way more than the women are. Just saying. So, what else we got here? Confident Donovan isn't going to go out in the first round again. Yeah, I am too, man. Donovan also on a whole nother level. So, Bell says you robbing the vault. That's wild. Listen, man, it ain't wild when somebody robbed my vault. Don't nobody and ain't don't nobody say that when I wake up in the morning and and somebody took all my money. Ain't that something? Planning magic, getting the groove, send them home, move on. No problem with that at all. My man Phil says, preach, Earl. Hey, Phil, shout out to you, man. You just been gifting memberships left and right for the last couple of days. I can't tell y'all enough, man, how much everybody at the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show uh, appreciate all that love and support. What are you going to say? Facts. What else we got here? He says, half confident, 100% hope. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Listen, till next time, man, you all be blessed. Oh, one last thing, because like we do got like a minute and a half uh, left. Uh, I don't know if you all seen my tweet on Twitter about um, – just a random thought I had. I tell y'all all the time, I'm going to say it again. And I know I'm starting to sound redundant, man. Spread love, be great. Being great, come with a price. Spreading love is priceless. In this game, we have a job to do. It's our job to sometimes be critical of a, of a sports team or a player. But at the same time, I think we also have a job to do as humans to like show love and to respect to, for other people. And one of my biggest things is to make sure that I'm always humble, that I'm always like careful with what I let come out my mouth. I think there's a way that you can be critical towards a player, towards an organization without, you know, teetering on that line of disrespect or offending somebody. So that's why we are paid professionals. That's why we are trusted to be articulate and to create a picture. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there. I love y'all, man. To next time again, man, be great. Spread love. I will see you next week. And I think I got another special guest. I'm out of here. Oh, 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 oh,